Hi, this is David. We're going to continue today our discussion about services in uh, Java Spring Boot application. In the last video, I showed you how to create it and call a simple service. I had this service called uh, uh, Math Service Implementation, or IMPL, and it uh, implements this interface math service right here. It's a real simple thing. This is a method called add numbers. It does what you'd expect it to do. It just adds takes in two numbers, adds them together, and returns the sum of those numbers. And uh, in my controller of my MVC web service, I have uh, a method here that will take in two numbers as parameters up in the URL, and it will call that service. It calls it by basically newing up the service right here. And that's fine, except that now I've got this dependency right here that I, I'd like to... Uh, Eliminate. I'd like to give a little bit more flexibility because maybe I have multiple implementations of that math service. Maybe I have one where I've, uh, I'm actually doing the math and another one where I've hard-coded an answer, and that might be useful for testing. Um, or maybe I have different ones for different environments, or maybe they do different math for different parts of my organization. I don't know. It's a sort of a contrived example, but you can imagine uh, for more complex examples how that would work. Well, Spring supports this, and it supports this through dependency injection. And the way that I implement this is in my service right here, I have to label this class as a service, all right? Right here, and you see that it imported the namespace to do that up above. And then also what I want to do is I want to give it a qualifier. And the reason I give it a qualifier, uh, that service will be sufficient if I only have one implementation of this interface. But I want to have multiple implementations. So I'm going to give it a qualifier, and I'll give the qualifier a name. And I always use the same name as the class, but you don't have to. But it just makes it easier for me to track things. I'll do that, and I'll save it. And then if I were to create another implementation of the same interface, a Java class, I'll call it math service mock for mocking, and I'll say that implements math service right there. And in order to implement, I have to implement all the methods and properties of it, so I'll do that. I'll say OK right here. So I will implement this method right here, and I'll just return a number here. I'll just say always return the number 10, whatever. And this one also I want to decorate it. I want to say the class is a service, so Spring knows about it, and I want to give it a qualifier, and I'll give it that the name of this class right here. And once I've done that, then in my controller I don't really need to new this up. Instead, I'm going to comment that out. And at the top, at the class level, I'm going to create a private variable. And I'm going to call it uh, of type math service. The type will be the interface, not the implementation. And I'll name it math service. That's fine. Uh, and I'll decorate this with the. Um, I'll say auto wired me. I want Spring automatically to create this class for me, or this 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 uh, variable for me, as soon as it's being used. And I've got because there are multiple implementations of this. I have to tell it which implementation to use, and I do that with the qualifier attribute, and I specify I want this to be. Um, Let's do the math service impl. So hopefully I'll spell it right here. Math service impl, right there. And then when I now that I've done that, I've declared the math service here. But down in my method, at the bottom, I no longer need to new it up. What'll happen is as soon as you reference that the Spring Framework will automatically generate an instance of this. And it knows which instance to generate uh, because, I've, because of that qualifier attribute. So let's give it a try here. I'm going to run this thing. Here. And this is a get, so all I have to do is say uh, 
the class is uh, mapping to gcast slash add number slash one number slash another number. So I can do with the git, I can just do this right inside of the browser right here and there. So 10 plus 20 is 30, 10 plus 25 is 35, and so on. And that just works. Uh, if I wanted to use the other implementation, the one that I've hard-coded a return value, let me stop running this right now, then this one just always return 10. Well, I can do that as well, and I have to go back up here, and instead of saying when I declare it, the qualifier is math service impl, I change that to math service mock. And now, when I run it, then any call to this add numbers method, no matter what parameters I pass in, should always return a 10, because that's what this does. So I send the get again, and I get a 10. It doesn't really matter what I pass in, it always returns 10. Now you may ask yourself, well, why do this? Why bother? And the reason is because you may, you probably wouldn't go in and change your controller to use this. You probably would have your controller, your live thing, doing this real implementation. And you'd have another method that's, that's maybe a test method that doesn't want to bother to go and do all the details of whatever that, that live implementation does. You just want to hard code something. And this becomes a big deal, not so much when you have something simple like just adding two numbers together, but imagine if instead of adding numbers together, you actually went out in your implementation here and called uh, another web service or you called, you wrote to or read from a database. Well, those are dependencies that you probably don't want in your when you're doing tests because the dependencies are fragile and they take time uh, and you're not testing those dependencies, you're just testing the code inside of the calling method. So you can get around that by mocking them out. And this is a simple way to do that just by decorating with attributes. This is David. Thank you for watching.